What's going on guys, Philip at Trade Genius. All right, this chart in front of you is what we're gonna dive into in this video. I'm gonna show you how this current price action is very similar to what's set up the last previous two times before having, and why we're gonna be probably back at 13,800 plus before you know it. So let's dive into this video and check it out. Trade Genius. Guys, real quick, the 299 yearly special that's 12 months with us in the room with our trade signals, altcoins, crypto, Bitcoin, ETFs, stocks, futures, every day, a lot of action in the room. So I'd love to see you in the room. $2.99, usually only do that on Black Friday this year. They let it loose one more time. So check that out. All right, let's dive into this chart. So what do we have here? Let's focus on this area over here. This is the 2012 halving uh, and what happened prior to it. So let's zoom in here. All right, so what we usually see is a big run up, blow off, and then we have this bear market pullback. Now, 2011 to 2012 was a very shortened cycle, so this, this bear market didn't last very long. Pulls back, you basically can, are able to draw a trend line on it, and then eventually it bottoms out, that trend line breaks, and then it comes out of that bear market condition, makes a high, will pull back to a support and resistance level, which was defined by these lows, and then we'll hold that level and then grind up into the halving. Now what happens is these highs that come, that you make out of the bear market get taken out usually before halving. Okay, so in the case of the 2012 halving, uh, it came about if the halving was in October, we broke those previous highs in July. So July, August, September, October. So about three months in front of that halving, those highs were taken out. Okay, if we move over to the next halving, which is the 2013 peak. Then we went into a pretty long bear market, but again, you could draw a trend line down. Uh, we finally break that trend line. Again, breaks through, confirms the bear market's over, breaks out, and then comes back to support and resistance, which was defined by this low here. So kind of similar to what we saw at the 6,000 mark on this most recent bear market. And then it comes through that, makes a high, pulls back to it, and then grinds higher. This ends up breaking that high. This high was $501 back on November uh, 2nd, 2015. And it breaks it right before the halving in May of 2016. So from November 2015 to May 2016. All right, so there is a longer period there, but eventually does break it and does break it before halving. Now, coming forward to our current situation, again, bear market downtrend, breaks the downtrend, comes up out of the bear market, this one outperformed all bear market exits. You could say it was because of the plus token. Maybe it was. Um, they certainly were piling in on the buys on that. You know, there was a huge, huge Ponzi in China, right? They were gobbling up a lot of coin. And as such, then it, as that fell apart and they started dumping the Ponzi wallets, then that kind of came back down to earth, met up with our cycle repeat pricing action, which we'll look at here in a little bit. But this comes down, this one, this time hasn't quite touched the support and resistance. So you could argue that we might try to probe down to these levels one more time. Uh, that is possible. However, uh, the closer we get to having, the less likely that price is going to mess around on these lower levels and starts grinding higher. But like with the previous two cycles, this would imply that we take out this 13,800 area before having. It's usually the case. So we're in January, having's in May, maybe the third week of May. So it's about three and a half months or so, give or take, away. So, and you know, price can jump quickly, right? I mean, we went from here in June 17th, start of, start of the, that weekly candle. We, in two weeks, one weekly candle, two weekly candles, we ran up from the open of 89.79, peaked out at 13,831. So, you know, price can move five, $6,000 in a couple of weeks easy. So if we're meandering around these levels, even uh, a couple of weeks out from the halving, you know, we could take out that prior high. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but that would be, generally speaking, kind of what we're looking for somewhere in this area, March, April, uh, could even be as late as um, beginning of May to finally play out. But looking at that, take out that previous high. Now you could argue that because of that plus token Ponzi driving price up so much higher than it organically was going to drive up, that really the high should have been somewhere, um, you know, down in this level here, seven, eight thousand dollars. And so if we break through that. That's probably the more natural price level that should have been attacked. And, you know, maybe that is a caveat to this 
trend that we've been seeing, but we'll, you know, and that's certainly possible. But if you recall this 13,800 level, if that rings a bell, that's because our quarterly chart has that as a key level, right? So that's where the, usually where the month closes and then opens on the quarterly candles or the quarterly open and quarterly close. Every single time we've done that, we've made this rounding bottom pattern come up, attack that level and then break through it. And that is the last time you ever see those levels. So we are setting up for that again, almost a, like a cup and a handle pattern actually playing out on the quarterly chart here. And again, these levels below 10K, uh, you're not gonna see them again at once we break through here. Okay, this halving cycle coming down to six and a quarter Bitcoin halving reward. I mean, that's a big time, this, this halving is gonna have a huge impact more so than the other ones in, in terms of dollar value. Um, demand is much greater than it was back in the previous two halving cycles. And now we're down to six and a quarter per block Bitcoin reward. So it, there's there's a lot of upside potential. People that understand the math get this. Other people think that the valuations are too high. It doesn't make any sense to them. But it does when you realize what Bitcoin is as digital gold. And you're starting to see it with this Iran conflict. Assume that role. It's ex being accepted. You know, big money is running into it as it does with gold to hedge. So we're beyond, you know, the speculation phase of what its utility right now is. That is gold 2.0. Other things can be built on it, side chains and things like that. And that will come. We're not even tapping into that really here. But the value right now is gold 2.0. If we look at the cycle repeat graph, now because of the Iran conflict, okay, Bitcoin was rolling over. Remember we talked about if Bitcoin rolls over and if it takes out those early lows in January, typically that's not a good sign. It was rolling over. All of a sudden we have that assassination on Iran's top military commander, that strike on him, pumps price up, gold jams with it, and we we're over our skis, to, so to speak, now relative to where the cycle typically would take us. Okay, so now that it seems like things have de-escalated. Gold's coming off, Bitcoin's come off from that 8,400 plus price action that we saw earlier. And so we're gonna see if this comes back down. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to meet these price levels. What we're looking for is actually just kind of mating up with the gyrations of the price action. So it could be that it stays up higher, it holds this area here for a bit, which would make sense. It holds uh, the 6,800 to 7,000 area for a bit. But you'll notice that once price started coming back down in line with the halving cycle, you'll notice that the pricing started to synchronize up and down. If you notice, see that? So now we didn't, this point, this point in the cycle, we didn't have any kind of military conflict last time back in 2016. So this is really the first test bed of how does it really behave in a real geopolitical crisis conflict situation. And we're seeing that play out. So this is kind of what we expected to see. And we're finally seeing it. So we will have those deviations, but I think you need to temper some of this price action with that. So just keep that in mind uh, as we're going forward. But as we start to head toward the halving, you know, you'll notice that, you know, halving is going to be here. So if we take a look at this section here, right, here's halving. Um, you know, this implies, again, that price jumps up to 93.89. Okay, so that was back where we were talking about if price was, you know, behaving organically that we would break the highs back here, over here, right before having, we take out those highs. So that is a consideration. However, if price stays elevated, we maintain these gyrations, but we stay elevated, then I think that increases the probability of taking out the high market highs of that 13,800 area. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Again, you know, the price action is shaping up. We're in this, these bands that have formed, that form off the bear low, you see them here. These are bigger ones than we've seen in the previous ones. But, you know, the volatility is expected. You, sh you should expect it to pick up, and it is. <clears throat> but once you once we leave this band, this high, this channel, that's it. We're not going to see these prices again. If you understand the math of Bitcoin, that should not be a surprise to you. But many don't, and that's why you guys as early adopters are going to do really, really well in the long term with Bitcoin. So that's it for this video, guys. Just wanted to share that with you. You know, again, view from 30,000 feet keeping things in perspective and uh, hodl on because you're going to be rewarded for that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Trade Genius.